Welcome back to the Bear Den. I would like to thank all my cubs for joining me today. We are back with some more uh, Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. Uh, as you can see now, I have a ridiculous hat on. We are in the third stage of summer, and we are going through and exploring the area. We have a, an exploration challenge to get one more kill with the skipping stone in this area. So we're going to try to go ahead and knock that out uh, as soon as possible. It looks like with the more exploration challenges you complete, the more you open up the map. So that is going to be, I guess, progression of the game is based off of hitting XYZ challenges on the map. So far you're going to see a lot of uh, repeat enemies such as little rabbits, uh, the big like boar men, um, and stuff like that. I think, yes, Kobe, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just always going to have to call that out um, anytime I hit that shot. That feels uh, pr pretty sweet. Um, this is coming out uh, after Thanksgiving, so I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know with the whole spicy cough that's happening in the world that uh, a lot of people needed to stay at home, not go out and travel, uh, really not be able to see their family and everything. So I hope everybody had a safe and smart uh, Thanksgiving. I hope that everybody is thankful for the blessings that they have in their life. I know I definitely am. I'm definitely privileged to be able to play games like this. I did. I was able to spend some time with my family since uh, it's just how the current living arrangement works out. So no, uh, no super spreader events for me. Um, but yeah, just saying. I uh, hope everybody had a thankful, thankful Thanksgiving. If that makes sense. Uh, hopefully nobody went too crazy shopping. Uh, buying new stuff. Uh, I just upgraded my PC uh, to be a true gamer PC now, and by what I mean by that, it has the uh, four RGB uh, lights, three front uh, intake, and one exhaust uh, from Rosewell. Not sponsored, uh, by the way. Maybe one day, that'd be sweet. And then I get more cases and more lights and build the ultimate gaming grid where it's just a room full of lights running a PC. That'd actually be pretty funny to see like a full like liquid cool system but it's like pipes that run along like the top of the room and everything and it connects to like multiple PCs in the room. That'd be pretty futuristic actually. Alright so when I blow up that's my first goal. Build a room of PCs that is just all liquid cool but, so it's like the old architecture where you could see like the pipes and everything, but just have like the colorful liquid being piped through them instead. Um, I think so, in the beginning, you really don't main have to maintain the rice too much. Uh, you'll probably see me do a lot of the check back labor every so often, coming through, pulling weeds, uh, gathering supplies, uh, looking for like spiders, frogs, stuff like that. Always checking this corner. The more I'm playing the game, the more areas I'm learning to be on the lookout for because those are the ones that have uh, essential fauna and stuff that is going to help prevent like growth, or not help prevent, help uh, prevent stunting the growth of the rice. And then we'll get like the little updates on. I think I still, in the previous video, I'm still looking to get the necessary materials to build the forge. Oh, and just going through, showing off what I have, the items that I have. Um, I believe, so I've watched a little bit of gameplay from other streamers. It's like later on in the game, you'll be able to process the ingredients got to pick up the corner spider so right now things will just go raw um, but you do have to make sure that you eat dinner every night so it's just preserved through rations and water 
munching away there sometimes uh, they'll do storyline additions throughout the dinner scene so they'll do a another like building block of like oh this is this and this is this um, I messed up by well I didn't really mess up I like double checking the rice at night doing some extra weed pulling making sure that everything's going good there Ooh, but back to, uh, also, support local business. Uh, if you're doing any crazy Cyber Monday shopping, uh, like check out Etsy or uh, just any of your local retailers. I, I actually ordered some art um, that I'm really looking forward to get uh, in the coming month or so. I know, like, the one big purchase that I'm really hoping and I hope that uh, EVGA pulls through is um, the 3070. I know I probably talked about upgrading my graphics card previously, and I know this is probably the one thing everybody wants to do at the current moment is upgrade their system. And, you know, it's either that or buy a PlayStation 5, and I'm not buying a PlayStation 5. I actually sort of want to uh, play um, Miles or Oz, the new Spider-Man. It looks pretty dope. I love the Spider-Man for PlayStation 4. Uh, that's a game I 100%ed. I have the Platinum Trophy on the PlayStation for it. And that was a lot of grinding. That was a lot of 3-4 hour sessions of just sitting in front of the, the projector and just hoping for the best. For right now, I'm just checking out the... So you can see what type of flora and fauna affect your rice status and how each of the fertilizers uh, help grow it in certain aspects and give certain stat bonuses. So we're in autumn. The harvest should be soon. Uh, like I always I'm trying to do is keep a healthy reserve of fertilizer. So, making sure to build up on the components that I already have, using the things that I've gathered throughout the week. Hopefully, the amber production increases, because it seems like I have a very minimal amount, and it looks like that has a huge impact on what type, or not type, the growth of the fertilizer. Um, using all the rotten food, since I cannot uh, store it correctly, so, definitely trying to get any of the bonuses as much as possible in the, the beginning of the game. Become a little overpowered by the late game. You know, the usual things you try to do. The one game where it really helps if you become overpowered is Dark Souls, because that's a game. I've beaten Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3. And if I had not grinded the beginning levels, I don't think I would have completed those three games because the rolling uh, mechanics in that game blow my mind. I also get like super frustrated, so it's just like, all right, if I can make it easier to take down a boss, why won't I? So that's what you're seeing me do right here, just trying to get as overpowered as possible. Uh, we got this powder of transformation. Uh, I didn't add any of the components. I just realized that. But just checking for weeds running back and forth throughout the soil. And going back to the world map. Trying to get a little bit more brand new level. Haven't exp uh, explored this yet. So we have to mine stone. Clear the innermost area. So like a lot of these levels are going to be... Uh, Okay, so spiky rocks hurt you, and you cannot harvest them freely, so we'll have to figure out what's going on. I do like, once again, previous rounds, uh, the scrolls are a pretty cool idea, telling you how to get better at the game, and that's your, like, learning. It looks like you can even damage... Uh, enemies on the rocks 
So that's actually a pretty cool... Oh, you can spin move them and throw them into the rocks. Pretty cool ideology. Um, I like how they do... It's just overall damage. It's not the weird thing in like games where enemies get buffed and like don't take environmental damage, but you take environmental damage. It's always one of the things that uh, seem a little bit interesting. Those are like... Also, I, I, I've done it a few times. I don't know how it works is the parrying system in this game. I think there is a strategy to it, but it's just sometimes I get lucky enough and it, you'll see like the enemy turn like a blue hue as uh, I hit them, so... It just means I've successfully parried. I do love the uh, orchestral music uh, in the background for each of these levels. It definitely adds a pop to each of the levels. It's definitely something that drives them along. It's very happy, like upbeat music. Twitch don't uh, or yeah, Twitch don't eat DMCA. I think that's the uh, the whole debacle that's going on with them right now. So, so as long as, uh, good thing this is only going up on YouTube, so I don't have to worry about that. That's the whole joke is that YouTube started it first. But that's an interesting, uh, ideology, and I definitely understand how that makes it harder for the whole idea of streaming platforms and copyright music. I understand that artists want to get paid, I understand labels want to get paid, but then... A lot of people play games because they have killer soundtracks such as like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. So you then start to cripple your market of your platform. Like Twitch saying like maybe you should just mute your games. It's like well then streamers are going to have a limited selection. Or not limited selection. They are going to have some restrictions on what games can be played or to the experience of what games can be played. Like, I think everybody's still going to play Cyberpunk when it comes out and put it on stream. They're just going to mute the music so that they don't get a strike or can leave up the VODs for people. But, I know, it A, being your job, like, you're just going to do whatever it takes to work. But you're also, as a gamer, want to be able to enjoy the game as it's meant to be and not suffered down to fit into the application you're using. So hopefully uh, people get to be able to enjoy the, the game how it's meant to be. Hopefully the music and that whole scenario gets resolved and I don't know what is the correct plan of action but I know definitely it's going to be a difficult time to navigate uh, what's allowed and what's not and platforms working with companies to get more uh, copyright free music or at least some type of library that allows them to host on the site uh, with it being like baked into their like royalty program or like their partnership with it so as you become like a, a twitch partner um, your fees go up a little bit higher to help pay for this. I, I don't know if that's the right answer. I know a lot of people would be like, well, that seems stupid. Like, why do you have to pay for things like that? But it's just, like, something just freeballing off the top of my head. Ideas what I think could address the situation. Um, I know that's also a little bit of socialism, communism uh, ideology, because some people don't play games that have copyrighted music, so why should I have to pay for them? But, you know, it's, it's for the greater good. You know, everybody, help everybody out. Or, or, I wonder if, well, see, I, I don't know if that's, like, possible, if you could whitelist certain games, like, soundtracks to not be tracked against, but that would be, I would think, difficult, because if it's a song that you'd have to, like, be able to track that it's coming from the game and not just a, uh, like, Spotify or something like that, so let me know uh, if you guys know what's going on with the 
DMCA uh, thing with Twitch. Let me know your opinion on how you would like to see that situation handled. Um, I just also realized I never added anything to that fertilizer, so it just completed with like the two items. And then just eating more preserved rations. But yeah, th these are like the type of topics that I'd like, like to engage in a little bit further down the road. Like, it's definitely something that as the culture of entertainment through video games is expanding in an ever-growing market, the new challenges that these platforms faces. Another like fun thing that uh, has actually benefited, or not benefited, but been able to transition very well in this time is Classic World Tetris Championship. So C CW Classic Oh, Classic Tetris World Championship, CTWC. Um, if you've ever been to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, I went last year, and they host the uh, CTWC, which is people playing the classic uh, Tetris on uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, and pretty much breaking the game. Like, getting scores that people can have fathomed, uh, there's level 29 which most people were defined as a kill screen because it moves so fast these people are able to go through it like it's nothing. It's a whole new community that is being sprouted out of it. We have, uh, I'm watching the VODs currently on who's playing where and you have people like I met a few people from last year such as Corian and Green Tea who are Japanese uh, gamers who play this game uh, and Corian is one of the gentlemen who is famous for helping promote a technique called hyper tapping so in games such as that you had the system that automatically moves left to right by you holding the button and they realized that you can move pieces over faster by pretty much in the name hyper tapping or pressing left and right really repeatedly with your thumb whatever position and watching some of these players like position a controller in whatever way possible to get it moving over blows my mind uh, this also reminds me that I've been playing a lot of Tetris 99 as of late because I'm <laughs> searching for the glorious dub in that game and god I have to tell you that is another like you just have to be good and I'm, I'm not that good I've, I think the best I've gotten is second which like that was like a hope that I got second instead of uh, like because no way was I getting first that person ahead of me was just like no lines and I was all the way at the top but yeah uh, classic Tetris World Champions they've been hosting everything through Twitch and been able to set up these stations for multiple people to play so that they are able to benefit off being able to play online so it's just it's cool to see where esports and uh, video game entertainment is expanding into and how certain uh, things are taking advantage of it and or not taking advantage of progressing with the times and who are adapting to the times because like I said, Weird Year, not everybody knows the answer to this, not everybody can figure out what is the proper plan of attack. Oh, and right now I am just uh, harvesting. I just walk around and hit Y uh, whenever I'm in the area. And it looks like it bundles them up for me on the ground, so that's pretty cool as well. Sorry, a lot of random tangents uh, this episode. But just a lot that uh, I think just needed to be touched on, talked about. There's a lot of things that are happening in the world that uh, I'm interested in. I want to see if my subscribers are interested, anybody who just stumbles upon the video. Uh, it's good just to have that interaction and seeing what people are doing in these times. What people are doing to keep themselves entertained. So I harvested, laid the rice so that it can dry. It's still soaked, so I'm probably going to have to give it like a few cycles and then come back and double check on it to see that it's okay or not. And it's looking like 
later on in this game, I will be able to make a ton of rice because there is a lot of drying racks that I have not filled. And abundance of rain will prevent them from drying, but no matter what, please bring them in besides the winter chill. Okay, that makes sense. So you want to make sure to process the rice before the end of time. Before the end of time. This, before a uh, winter session, it looks like. Or at least before the end of winter. Well, I think uh, we'll have Darren and start to wrap it up here. I thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Uh, if you like this uh, content, leave a like. Uh, if you want to engage in any of the conversation that I was having, leave a comment down below. I usually respond to everybody. Uh, hopefully leave a little like on your comment. Uh, subscribe uh, helps me know who's interested in the content. Um, like I always say, hit that bell notification like it's the dangly thing in the back of Cardi B's throat. Uh, because that is now my new favorite one-liner to use. And, yeah, I just want to say uh, thank you guys so much for uh, watching this content. Tell somebody you love them today. Make sure you have your I love you partner. Or your I love you buddy. Remember, at least two. And have a good one.